Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I do appreciate the opportunity to uh, benefit from, from this discussion today. And Representative Mal, I think you've done an excellent job of, of laying out the facts. Uh, um, I must admit, I'm playing a little bit of catch up. I, I did miss uh, uh, one of these hearings on military leave. And so uh, um, to be able to participate in this conversation, I think, is important. And um, I want to bring the conversation back to kind of the big picture. And, and I want to point out why I'm so thankful that the chairman has convened the state government committee for this, because to the casual observer, somebody might look at this committee and say, well, you're discussing environmental issues, right? And that's not the case at all. We're actually discussing governance issues, which is what the state government committee is here for. We're discussing agency oversight. And to talk about accountability and oversight of, of an agency that has perplexed a lot of us is something that is important for us to spend our time on. And to bring it back to the big picture, we need to think about, well, how is it that government is supposed to work? First, we have a constitution that sets up the highest law of the land, and that sets up the framework and the structure and the set of rules by which we all operate. And that creates our branches of government. We've got the executive branch, the legislative, the judicial branch, and we have the process laid out in the constitution for us to create statutes. We are sent by the people to convene together to create laws, and those laws are how government is supposed to operate. And then underneath those laws, we have agencies that are supposed to fill in the dots as far as how to execute those laws based on what the legislature wrote, and that's where you get regulations and policies. But those regulations and policies are supposed to be underneath the statutes that the legislature passes. Now, I know that that's not news to anybody here, but I think it's important to put that in our mind when we start thinking about an agency like the Susquehanna River Basin Commission, which um, was set up by a compact in 1971, and then really has been seemingly untouchable since. Governance and oversight is an ongoing process that requires hard work, that requires people to roll up their sleeves and make sure that people continue doing their job day by day by day. And the reason we're having these hearings is because there's a, a strong sense among folks in the Susquehanna River Basin uh, service area that that we've got an agency that is is somehow not fulfilling its core mission the way it was it was supposed to, and so it is important for us to to come back to the idea of talking about accountability and oversight, and how do we hold this agency accountable when it seems to be somewhat outside of that uh, process by which us as legislators are typically used to trying to reach out and and address issues on behalf of constituents. And I think one of the things that complicates this issue is the fact that the sound bites kind of lend themselves to making the agency, unfortunately, more untouchable. Uh, a sound bite might be that if you oppose something, regardless of what it is, something that the Susquehanna River Basin Commission does, then obviously you want to pollute the Chesapeake Bay, or obviously you want to deplete the Chesapeake Bay. That's what the sound bites would say. And nothing could be further from the truth. I think, Representative Mao, the... The way you laid out your comments to kick off this hearing is, is so important that our goal is to reach for smarter, more accountable government, to meet the goal of the commission, which is certainly it's a laudable goal to make sure that the water rolling downstream continues to be there for all of the necessary users along the way. The compact is supposed to be a, a, a commitment of, a, of agreement among all the users along that waterway to make sure that it is there for all the needs. That, that, that people have along that waterway. But when we start getting to the point where the agency seems more concerned about its own, about its, about its own personnel, employees, the, the budget, the money, all of that, and, and we lose sight of the actual mission of making sure that we've got a quantity of water where it needs to be when it needs to be there, and that's it, then we've got a problem. And as, as, as Representative Mal, as you have so, so, uh, uh, so, so well stated, the rate payers, the rate payers end up being the victims of that dynamic. And so it is important for us to bring this back to the idea that a compact makes sense when there is a clearly articulated mission and a goal and everybody buys into that and everybody plays by the role, the, the rules that get you towards that mission. But when we have an agency that does not submit to accountability and oversight, what we have is we have an unnecessary infringement on citizens' pursuit of the American dream. That's what this is all about, the ability to create jobs, the ability for, for entrepreneurs to build a better mousetrap and to be able to operate in this area 
to, to pursue their dreams. And that's what an unaccountable, expensive agency gets in the way of. I just want to add a little bit of a, of a local um, anecdote re regarding this. I'm, I'm pretty far north and west of here, um, but I'm still, my legislative district is half in, half out. I sit on the Continental Divide. And one thing that is interesting and, and counterintuitive is that uh, we, we hear a lot of discussion about how the SRBC regulates people who want to consumptively use water within the, the, the basin. And ostensibly, the purpose of that is to make sure that there's enough water downstream. We don't take all the water out here and there's no water there. Paradoxically, we've actually had a situation in my district where um, something that is cleaning up the environment, it's an acid mine drainage or AMD treatment plant um, that is being very successful in, in achieving its mission. We've got a, 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 an acid mine drainage outlet this plant was put there. Um, it was originally funded by DEP, but it's no longer operationally uh, budgeted. It's actually, there's actually private funds that, that continue to provide for the operation to this AMD treatment plant. It's self-sustaining, absolutely. This treatment plant is so successful that they are actually uh, running a trout hatchery right on the site from their outlet water. And we had a, a user that wanted to come in and purchase water from them. And the DEP says that there is actually a requirement for zero outlet, or there's no, there's no required outlet of water from that. The, the, the water coming out of this outlet from this plant, whether it's there or not, does not impact the viability of the stream. The only thing that would really affect the uh, viability downstream would be the pollution that might be coming out of it, which this plant cleans up. So they could sell all of their water, not impact the stream that they're in. Now, they actually sit outside of the Susquehanna River Basin. There was a buyer that wanted to buy the water to use it inside the commission territory, and the SRBC said no, because you can't bring the water in. I don't understand that. This is the sort of nonsense that we see from an agency that does not, does not meet the requirements of accountability and oversight, does not serve the people that it's ostensibly there for. So um, I think that it, it is so important for us to continue to dig down and continue to do what we can as the Pennsylvania legislature, um, as the biggest entity that is impacted by the actions of this commission to hold them accountable so that they serve the citizens that they're there for and that they can meet the mission that they were incorporated for and not veer off of that course. So Representative Mal, thank you for your leadership on this. And Mr. Chairman, thanks for the opportunity.